eight, from 1900 to 1980, again, black men made music about love. We weren't violent in music at all. But the murder rate in the black community can be directly correlated with the shift in the narrative of white record companies and what they choose to invest in. I've been in the record company. Yeah. The exploitation of black culture has always been a business because we did not own the vehicles in which to exploit ourselves. So, before I elaborate on that, and the brother talking about the exploitation of black culture, let's listen to what Jay the Kiss has to say. You have a, a line on there where you say, although I'm successful, I can't, I can't figure this shit out, out though. Yeah, because it always, you know, it's crazy. They, I haven't seen the music business change umpteen times now. Streaming, all of this. CDs, records, cassettes. Who knows? So, figuring it out is always the challenge. Hip hop is a Ferris wheel, and the, the challenge is to stay on the on the wheel. The course is gonna go around to a bunch of chambers that ain't your cup of tea. But if you can stay on the wheel, it's gonna get back around the your origin. You know what I mean? A lot of dudes fall off though that they can't they can't adjust the was they can't figure it out. You have a, a line so, on say other oh, no, So I'm gonna break down how both posts coexist. It's late at night, so you're gonna hear ambulance, you're gonna hear cop cars. You know the South Bronx is demonic at night, a lot of shooting, killing. So just bear with me. So, the first dude said the exploitation of black culture, right? Basically, we the flavor inside the rice, right? If no black people wasn't in America, there wouldn't be no hockey. Boxing wouldn't be about nothing. Music wouldn't be about nothing because we invented rock and roll, hip hop, jazz, ragtime music, and a bunch of other genres, right? A bunch of other inventions. But this ain't a black or white thing. This is an evil and a good thing. So there's this steady group of people that just constantly keep exploiting our talents, our gifts, our energy, our genetics our DNA, they just keep exploiting us, exploiting us, exploiting us. And they're going to continue to keep exploiting us as long as we coexist. This is why segregation is better than integration. You know what I'm saying? People need their own and to be independent and to be separate. So that way you can recognize each individual for their own strengths. You can recognize each group of people for their own contributions to life and society. You can recognize each ethnicity, nationality, or group individually by their gifts and their talents. But when it's mixed together and it's gumbled up, people get to hide and people get to leech and people get to act like they, they, they doing more than what they really doing because they all intertwine together. They all in the same box or same bundle or bucket, right? If blacks were separate, how we got Chinatown, Little Italy, you know, I ain't counting Harlem. People keep saying Harlem, but a lot of black legends that was in Harlem still had to go through the back of the Cotton Club. And Dutch Schultz, who's from the Bronx, real name Arthur Flagenheimer, he was a Bronx gangster. Dutch Schultz was running through Harlem, smacking niggas up, robbing them, extorting them, and shit like that. But this ain't about that. What it is is, these people gonna keep exploiting us, using us. We had the Negro Leagues Baseball. Negro Leagues Baseball was better than Major League Baseball. The Negro Leagues Baseball was better than the, 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 the Major League Baseball. With Satchel Page and all of them. They said, you know what? We're going to take these dudes, offer them more money, and get them to leave the Negro Leagues and come to our shit and make our shit more flavorful. And then the Negro League going to crumble because we're going to take all their best men. Right? 
everything we have, they make sure they infiltrate it with money. They offer us money because they know dudes be money hungry, greedy, a lot of larceny in their heart because they done starved you for centuries, right? So when y'all sell the culture out and sell yourself out, your genetics, your people, your principles, your integrity out for money, this is what's going to keep happening. Like Kiss said, it's going to be a Ferris wheel. It's going to constantly change. Cassette, CD, this, that, this, that, streams. I remember it was ringtones, dollar songs, and that's when Soldier Boy and all them came. They're going to constantly keep changing the narrative in the game. Every time you master the game, or every time you master the ropes, they're going to switch the game. Look what happened during the COVID lockdown. A lot of people was getting that scam money. A lot of people was getting the government bonus money. And people was putting it into stocks. And a few government officials like, yo, y'all giving these people money and they putting it in the stocks and making more money. Y'all helping these people outdo us. And then they started tampering with the stock market. They started putting the shit on freeze and doing little funny things with the stock market. Now, look, the stock market is crumbled. That shit is twisted. And nobody now wants to invest in the stock market because a lot of bullshit was going on. You know what I'm saying? A lot of snake funny sucker shit. Right? So anyway... Long story short and a short story shorter, hip-hop, black music, everything is going to continue to keep getting exploited as long as we keep intermingling with other ethnicities and groups and letting people use us, mimic us, steal our swag, steal our aura. We keep letting these racist corporations that really don't like us paint the narrative. The reason why all these kids are shooting and all that because... This is what the government is pushing. You see how they push an agenda? Now, nah, drill is more popular. First, it was trap. Right? First, it was trap. Then, it was drill. And then, now, there's, you know, it's all type of other shit. And they saying, oh, we don't want to sign nothing but this because this is what's selling. Nah, that ain't what's selling. That's what y'all pushing. Now, all the kids is wilding and shooting. Now, this when they demonize y'all. Yeah, oh, they gun violence, too much shooting, too much killing, blah, blah, blah. And then they always keep showing black kids only. Knowing in Mexico, I mean, knowing in California, there's a billion Latino gangs, Mexican gangs. Knowing all in the Midwest, there's all type of different militias and white coalitions and stuff. But the narrative is to always show black people, black people. We the poster child of negativity. We the poster child of darkness, evil, rape, muggings. Nowhere in the world during the COVID lockdown, all these black people was just attacking Chinese people out the blue. We don't hate Chinese people. Most of the Chinese people make their money from black communities. Their stores is in black communities. That's a narrative they was pushing. Right? We've been watching Kung Fu movies since the 70s when it came on Channel 5. Two movies in life from 3 to 5, 3 to 6 o'clock or whatever. This is why you have groups like Wu-Tang. And dudes like J. Ru the Damager. Because black people, we fuck with um, Chinese and Asian culture. A lot of grandmasters in Kung Fu and martial arts are black. But you let the media, which is ran by Ashkenazi Jews, synagogues of Satan, and all type of demonic deviants, Balfamets or whatever, and they make you think blacks hate Asians. And then they created laws in Asians' favor. Stop Asian hate, stop this, stop that. Then you even had a guy that was trying to run for mayor, a Chinese guy. He was about to hang us. Good thing he didn't get elected. People, y'all got to wake up, open your mind, use your critical thinking skills, your reasoning skills, and your rationalization abilities, man. How y'all not seeing this? They baiting y'all, they leading y'all this way. Look, they blocking the street off, go that way. And then when you go that way, they saying, yeah, look at these people. They doing this and this and that. Because y'all not thinking outside of the box. Y'all not thinking outside of the box. No rapper than die into Biggie and Pop. I'm talking about shootings and killings. Some people want to say Scott LaRock. Scott LaRock was a DJ. But yeah, that was the first hip-hop murder. Scott LaRock and Highbridge. But he was a DJ. Right? Um... Some people gonna say the guy from Rex and Effect, Posse D. They wasn't really rappers. They was like R and B dudes. They was down with Teddy Riley. But I'ma say Pac and Big. Once they made a lot of money to this day, they still kind of fake de deify 
Pac and Big so y'all can worship Pac and Big. They still making money off Pac and Big. And Pac wasn't even super lyrical. You know what I'm saying? And Big wasn't really, you know, Big had bars, but, you know, he said too much gay shit and all that, and pedophile shit. But, um, yeah, they deify Pac and Big. And they made a lot of money off it. So now more rappers is dying, dying, dying. All these black young rappers is dying because they don't got no older mentors. They get in the bag, but they don't want to put an old nigga in their corner because they think old head going to hate on them or try to take their bag, which some old heads do, some older niggas do. But they don't have the right consigliers around them to give them correct information and structure them, right? So it's all cash cow shit. None of these rock and roll dudes is dying. Ozzy Osbourne ate bad heads and sniffed half a keys of coke. He's still alive. He outlived a lot of rappers. And then during the COVID lockdown, you know, from 2020, 2021, and 2022, a lot of pioneers died from, I guess, heart disease and bad health. Bismarcky, Kango, K. Slay, from um, Kango from UTF, a lot of elders started dying too, pioneers, but not from violence, from bad health. So a lot of rappers always dying from bad health or through violence. You know what I'm saying? And y'all not figuring this out. Y'all keep working for the same people who don't even like us. They want us dead. And then when, y'all, when these people do hire y'all and get y- give y'all large sums of money, y'all don't make a move and buy a whole row of buildings or try to set up shop. Y'all go to the Aryan Nation Jewish nigga, the Albanian, the Arab... Y'all go to the y'all go to the the jury nigga from another ethnicity or race, and y'all give that nigga all y'all money. So y'all get the chicken, and then y'all put it all back in another community, and y'all financially empower a whole other ethnic group instead of putting the money in yourselves or your community and your people and building y'all up. If rappers is out there acting tough, talking shooter shit and acting tough and y'all wearing super jewelry and all that, y'all got to be able to hold it down. Y'all got to be built like that. And then I don't want people to hear, oh, niggas is hating because them niggas was getting money. Bro, this been going on since the 80s, since the drug era, man. Rich Porter and them is getting money. You had niggas like Preacher. AZ and them is getting money. You had niggas like Ron Do. You had niggas like Lou Sims. So in every era, when there was hustlers... There was extortionists. Black people was getting money in Harlem. You had Dutch shows. You had Lucky Luciano. <laughs> right? There's always going to be hustlers. There's always going to be guerrillas, extortionists, murderers, hitmen. And then there's going to be niggas that can do both. That's where you get your boy Georges. You'll get your Alpos. You'll get your Chicky the Emperors. You'll get your Chapo Guzmans. You get niggas that got murder game and hustle game. But during the drug era, it was a lot of niggas getting money. And niggas was getting extorted. Niggas was getting murdered. Now, y'all want to fake switch the world. Old niggas is hating because I got it. No, you pussy. And niggas know you pussy and you can't hold it down. Give me your money. Nigga, pay punk dues. Check in. Do this. Give me your chain, you sucker. It ain't about hating. You can't hold it down. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, niggas that hate word, niggas be running with that shit. Because niggas be weak. Niggas be pussy. I'm telling you, bro. It don't got nothing to do with hate. My grandma used to tell me, don't get nothing that you can't hold down, boy. And I'm telling you, I robbed a lot of niggas in the early 90s. I'm not proud of it, but yeah, niggas is running down. That's the animal food chain. The eagle hunts this animal. This animal hunts that animal. That animal hunts that animal. That been going on since Shaka Zulu and all of them. My tribe gonna run up in this village, conquer this tribe. That been happening since the Aztecs, the Mayans and all that. But bro, y'all gotta stay informed, study history and wake up, man. Open your mind, move different, man. Learn proper etiquette, war etiquette. Get your skills up. The gods don't mingle with the mortals. Kings don't eat with the peasants. The only time wise men hang around fools is when they educating them or enslaving them. Stay up like a cup, I holler back on my collar crack, we get up like sit-ups. I'm oxygen, uno. Iron. 